So during the surgery, I'm gonna be putting so much numbing medicine inside, I'm hoping you're gonna wake up and be numb for up to 24 hours. That's my goal. But certainly, we're gonna send you home with pain medicine. I typically use ibuprofen, around 600 milligrams. You're gonna take it three times a day. And we're gonna give you a prescription for oxycodone. We'll also give you a prescription for a stool softener because one of the side effects of oxycodone is constipation. Your best friend, though, is gonna be an ice pack. Think about the Karate Kid. Ice on, ice off. Ice on, ice off. 10 minutes on, 10 minutes off. Five minutes on, five minutes off. Whatever you gotta do to stay comfortable. After surgery, swelling is gonna happen. It's just part of it. Gravity is not your friend when it comes to this surgery. And so what do we do? One, we put the drain in. The drain is there to get blood and fluid away from the surgical field. And like I mentioned earlier, that should be coming out around post-op day number two. And also, like I mentioned before, your best friend is an ice pack. Ice on, ice off. Ice on, ice off. Now, as far as the incision goes, the incision's gonna be closed with sutures underneath the skin and then coated with skin glue. The skin glue has a couple of things that's important. One, it's gonna stay there for probably close to two weeks and eventually it's just gonna kinda of peel its way off. The other thing that's good about the skin glue is that it's antiseptic, it's antibacterial. As far as the drain site goes, there will be a little opening where, this, where the drain was. And when that drain comes out, all you need to do is put a Band-Aid over it and that drain site will close within 24 hours. Once again, there's gonna be a pump inside your scrotum. It's gonna be sitting right in front of the testicles. And when we're doing the surgery, we actually try to put it as low as possible. But sometimes that pump starts to cinch up a little bit during the healing process. And we're gonna tell all of our guys to start gently pulling down on that pump after surgery. Now some guys can start within a week, some guys it takes about two to three weeks before they can start handling the discomfort of just gently pulling that pump. Eventually the pain goes away and they can do whatever they want with the pump, especially pump it up. After implant surgery I'm going to give you a prescription for oxycodone because it is a good pain relieving medication, but one of the side effects is it causes constipation. And so we're gonna give you a prescription for a medicine called Colace, which is a stool softener. And this should help prevent constipation. Other things you can do is just eating a high fiber diet, maybe get some raisins in there, maybe some apple juice. And certainly if the constipation starts to pick up, you can use something over the counter called Miralax. No prescription is needed, it's in the aisles of the drugstore. And this also helps to prevent constipation. After surgery, your job is to go home and be a couch potato. We certainly want you walking around. You get up, move around, you can do stairs, you can move around your house. But it's those first two days that we want you basically icing it around the clock and just getting some relaxation time. After the drain comes out, it's okay to go home and jump in the shower and just clean up, all right? You're gonna feel like a million bucks. But I don't want you doing anything dumb for a few weeks. Like, don't go and ride your bike. Don't say it's a perfect time to paint the house. Don't go clean your gutters. Take it easy. After about three weeks, you can start increasing your activity. Go for a walk around the neighborhood. You know, maybe go out, get a bite to eat or something like that. Go for a little drive somewhere. But in the first few weeks, we really want you just laying low. So a very common question is, is when can I start driving? Typically when you go home from an implant, you're gonna be sore, you're gonna get swollen, and you're gonna be given pain medicines like oxycodone. And so when you're driving, when you're taking oxycodone, we can't have you drive. You'll get pulled over. You know, it's a medicine that plays with your head and sedates you. And so driving is gonna be limited, at least for the first week, maybe up to 10 days. Now if you're pain free after I don't know, seven to 10 days or so, and you're just taking Tylenol or Motrin, and you feel good, you are certainly welcome to go ahead and drive. As far as working goes, well, the fortunate thing is a lot of people can work from home. There's, not a, uh, there's no reason that you can't sit at your desk, have an ice pack, and answer some emails, call some clients, whatever you need to do, but certainly if you're taking pain medicine, I wouldn't recommend working that day. 
So after the surgery, the typical recovery is as follows. Remember, you go home with a drain. For the first two days, it's ice pack, antibiotics, pain medicine. After day number two, you come in, we get the drain removed, go home, take a shower, and then you start moving about a little bit more. I would say the average recovery is about three weeks. So in other words, after three weeks, 90% of the swelling is gone. Nearly everybody is pain-free at this point. And so the majority, if not more than the majority, of the recovery is completed at this time. All right, so when do you call the doctor after your surgery? Certainly, if you have any question, please call me. We're here to help you. But the main times we need to hear from you is a fever. So if you're at home, it's post-op day number three, four, five, and you are getting the chills and you have a fever, please contact us. Certainly, if things start getting red and beefy and hot in the surgical area, please call us. And of course, if your pain is not controlled, we need to know. You're not meant to suffer after your surgery. We want you to be comfortable and have an easy recovery. So after implant surgery, my staff will be making a series of appointments for you uh, that are as follows. The first appointment will be two days after surgery, and that's when we usually remove the drain. I'm usually going to see a guy about two to three weeks afterwards to make sure that they're doing okay, make sure their labs are good, make sure their vital signs are fine, whatever they need from a urologic perspective. And then after three weeks, depending on the individual, I'll set up an appointment for what we call IPP teaching. In other words, inflatable penile prosthesis teaching. And that's where I'll spend time with you to teach you how to inflate it and deflate it. So after the device is in, after the healing process is completed, we're gonna usually bring you in anywhere between three and six weeks to teach you how to inflate and deflate the device. We call it IPP teaching or inflatable penile prosthesis teaching. And that's where we're gonna teach you how to pump up the device and deflate the device. After surgery, if there's any questions, certainly you can call me directly at the office. You can always send us portal messages. That's like an internal email that we have here at Advanced Urology. And if there's just generalized implant questions, uh, there's the Coloplast men's representatives. They're always available to help men during their preoperative and postoperative phase to help them get through their surgeries.